the show focused on delivering beneficial information on everything to do with products and services that can improve your life. This is Experts on Call on AM650. Welcome back to the program. On the uh, episode today of Experts on Call, Sean Lang, president of Interprovincial Roof Consultants, is in studio with us to talk about your home and particularly the roof over top, all of which is about protecting your investment. And in this little expensive corner of Canada, it isn't an investment worth protecting, Sean. Absolutely. Housing prices in this this corner of the world are absolutely nuts. Yep. So why wouldn't you want to put every uh, uh, effort forward into making sure that uh, the house is properly maintained and kept up, kept up? We were talking just before the break about how sometimes interprovincial roofing consultant gets called in uh, after a job is done, just to kind of give it the official thumbs up, the okie dokie mm. uh, from from but for the homeowner, it's a peace of mind thing. Yeah. And you said, you know, um, we get called in frequently for uh, assignments like this, and more often than we'd care, uh, we have to inform the homeowner uh, once we've done our inspection that uh, there are some things lacking. Yeah. So, um, rather, and then of course you, you get into wars between the the contractor who did the job, and then oh, you're full of beans, and the homeowner is caught in the middle of this, and and it's not fun. Yeah. So let's let's avoid that scenario if at all possible. How would that homeowner have benefited more uh, from calling in interprovincial roofing consultants? at the front end of the project, Sean, instead of at the back end. Yeah, well, that that's the key, uh, really, because if we get involved in the beginning, we can actually design the roof system not only to suit the building and to make sure that everything's going to meet all the proper codes and, and requirements, but also so that it meets the owner's budget. And what can happen when an, an owner, uh, particularly, let's say, a strata, when right. you're talking about a larger volume of roofing, mm -hmm. um, where they don't have a very ironclad document that the contractor is supposed to work to. Um, they might have a very loose one that just says that they're going to take off the roof system and install a certain product um, and clean up and, and leave the job. Uh, that kind of a scope of work leaves an open door for extras because they'll get into the project, they'll, they'll start work, they'll load the roof. And first off, they'll load it with all kinds of material and put in an invoice. So they haven't actually done the work. So now you're paying money for work that isn't completed. Um, and a lot of times they ask for even more than that in advance because there's no conditions set out in their scope of work that say what the payment schedule is supposed to be. Okay, right, sure. So they right away want 50% down. And, and if you're dealing with, uh, on a larger scale, if you're dealing, for example, with a strata environment, mm -hmm. then you're dealing with a, a strata council mm -hmm. who may or may not be composed of people who have one tiny clue or less about what roofing's all about. Yep. So they're essentially, the strata council is at the mercy of the contractor expertise yeah yeah and that comes up quite a bit um, so you know here you have uh, a contractor who basically gets uh, an open door to go on the roof system and do the work as long as he puts on the type of material that he's quoted you with the quality of the work isn't specified right you right. know so and the detailing isn't specified so he has an open door he can discover things that really should be done and he brings them up after the fact so that the price of your project goes up according to these extras and then the cost of the extras extras isn't checked um, when we write a specification we go in there in the beginning of the project and we look over everything on the roof we look inside any attics and any uh, ventilation spaces that need to be addressed as well any adjoining walls any adjoining chimneys or structures that might affect the quality of the roof system mm -hmm. we write the spec to address those issues so that when the contractors are invited to bid on the project they can read through that document they know exactly what has to be done incomplete. So you, what you do is identify all of the ingredients that will go into making the roof, uh, making, uh, fixing the roof. Yeah, and the, and the extent of it. And so then the contractors, and you'll, sub, you'll, uh, you'll ask for a number of bids from competitive contractors, mm -hmm. they're all working off the same spec sheet. Exactly. They know uh, each of them receives, the, it's like a black box cooking competition. Everybody gets a box with all the same ingredients, yeah. and it's up to you to come up with the best r meal. It's the same thing with these contractors. You yep. give them all the specs, yep. and they have to come up with the best bid 
given the very specific assignment they now know they're bidding on. Yeah, uh, a little different than that, though, because we actually give them the recipe as well. Ah, right? okay. So they get the black box and the recipe. Now they just have to follow it. Okay. And so it's actually very simple for them. And for the Strata <clears throat> Council or the homeowner, they get a complete roadmap of what that job is going to involve. Mm -hmm. At the same time, people who are bidding on the job get the roadmap, yeah, the right? Yeah, the owner knows exactly what's to be done as well, as long as he can understand the document. I mean, a lot of it can, can seem like gibberish because it's roof speak. Of course. Right, but the document does typically outline everything that needs to be done and where there is extras or let's just say separate unit items for unforeseen issues. For instance, you tear off the roof and there's plywood that you find is damaged. Mm -hmm. So you need to know what each sheet of plywood would cost to replace. So we write that into the spec as well. So even though we don't know how many sheets, we know how much the price is to replace one sheet. Right. So that gets extrapolated over however many have to be replaced. So we control the extras that way. So you've got complete lists of documents uh, or of, of instructions that tell the roofer what to do and tell him how much to charge for any issues that are unforeseen and not covered in the specification. Okay, so we even address how to deal with those unforeseen issues because we can predict what they may be, just not the volume of it. Okay. All right. So that's the only way there would be a bit of an open door on a specification, and it's it's kind of covered in every way that we can cover it, you know, because we can't predict certain things. What's the difference between uh, this is kind of a rudimentary question for you, I guess, but you know, you have to ask these uh, silly questions. What's the difference between a roof and a building envelope? Uh, well, the envelope it encompasses, as, as an envelope does, it encompasses the whole building, okay? Typically, what the building envelope refers to the air barrier and vapor barrier of the building uh, running up the walls. The roof membrane forms a part of that because it is keeping the system uh the environment out of the building. Are these large residential buildings, generally speaking, or would a single-family home also yep. have a membrane? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they have a, a building envelope as well. Okay. I mean, it, it's it's a, a component of any structure, really. Okay. Okay, but um, there's different requirements for different types of structures. Um, unheated buildings would require different things than a heated building, and different uses for each building would require different types of uh, components put together in a system. Right. So everyone is different. You can't simply say, uh, you know, I, I want, I've got this kind of building. I just want a roof. Here, let's just throw this on because I, I've heard it's a roof and my neighbor got one. But it may not apply to your building because each one's designed somewhat differently. Mm -hmm. And the uses and, and the way the structures are built together require that things are designed for it. So I, I get often asked, uh, by people, well, you know, my friend had a roof put on and it only cost $12,000. Right. Why is mine costing $18,000? It's the same roof, mm -hmm. same material even. Well, that roof that he had may be smaller, maybe not. Maybe it's the same square footage, but it's steeper. Okay. So the roofer charges more when the roof is steeper because there's more risk involved, right? He might slide off the roof. Oh, really? It's harder to manage the materials when they're on a steep roof. You get above a certain pitch, your hammer starts to slide if you put it down on the shingles. Okay, that makes sense. So it's a lot easier to work on a lower pitch than it is on a harder pitch. All right, okay. So they charge more for that. Um, accessing the roof. If the building has a lot of trees around it, if we're talking about a flat roof on an apartment building, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of trees and landscaping around the entire building, maybe there's wires running through, you know, from pole to pole across the street, how does the roofer get a crane in? to reach the top of the building to load the, the building. Oh. Okay, so he might need to get a bigger crane to reach that building than your neighbor's building, which was one story less with no trees around it. So the logistics of, of even getting to the roof can drive up the cost of the project. Okay. So these are the things that people don't quite understand all the time. And when they hear that their friend got a job done for X amount of dollars and they try and apply that to their job, it doesn't necessarily work because of all that. Okay, and so, but what uh, I suppose, uh, given the limited knowledge that the typical homeowner has about his or her roof, Sean, mm -hmm. when we are contemplating some kind of on, even an ongoing schedule of maintenance, let alone any kind of repairs or reconstruction, mm -hmm. uh, again, the, the, the smarter move is simply, rather than uh, uh, sh taking a shot in the dark, is calling a pro mm -hmm. and, and getting an idea 
of of the big picture up front. And, you know, I suppose it's tempting if someone uh, comes along and says, well, you know, I can, I can do that for, uh, you don't have much of a problem there, and I can I can whistle that together for you in an afternoon, no big deal. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then, of course, uh, whatever, whatever work gets done, gets paid for, that person's on his merry way, mm-hmm. and chances are not much really got done to whatever the roof issue was. Yeah. So all of this stuff, you see, what we try to do, it's typical, it's human nature, we try to go for the bargain every yeah. chance we get, Mark. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry, Sean. We're taking the we're taking the inside track. We're looking for the yeah. the cheap route out. Well, you know, uh, many of us have found out, usually the hard way, that you know, even though it's it's appealing, the lowest price isn't necessarily always the best one to take. Yeah. Um, and that's that's tough because everybody should be watching their wallet. Mm-hmm. I mean, it doesn't matter what size of building you have, whether it's worth a million dollars or it's worth a hundred thousand dollars, you need to be watching the dollars because they can get away on you very fast. Sure. But that's something that we also do when we're designing and managing and and inspecting projects is we're watching how much the cost is. We're trying to make sure that you're getting the best quality end product for the least amount of money. And as you said earlier, uh, sometimes you'll commit a contractor to the project and in the course of doing the job uh issues get discovered that you put that word Mm -hmm. in quotes Mm -hmm. uh that suddenly oh well you know this was we didn't really expect this but you know this is wrong this needs to be repaired as well Mm -hmm. if you're going to design a roof repair or restoration job for you're going to go in you're going to dig down and find out all of those Uh, possibilities are going to be examined in advance of anyone receiving the contract to do the work. So there will be, uh, I I would think, many fewer surprises. Yeah, many fewer is a good way to put it. There still can be. I mean, there's never going to be a situation where you can design a specification that's going to cover absolutely every possible issue that could come up. Mm -hmm. Um, For instance, wall issues can sometimes get discovered. Um, and that's not something that we would typically address, only in the sense that we have a price for plywood in our specification, uh, which could be applied to the walls. But let's say uh, the roofing contractor opens up a portion of the base of the wall to roll the membrane up the walls and discovers that some of the studs behind the wall sheathing are damaged. They've rotted out. Okay. Um, one of the ones we see quite often is a doorway onto a roof, um, a flat roof. Uh, there might be a small uh, structure with a door at the top of the stairs kind of thing. Sure, yeah, yeah. The base of those doors quite often get rotted out because the rain hitting the door runs down, r- runs in the corners of the door sill, rots out the structure underneath the door. So the roofer has to take a, that apart in order to install the roof system. He discovers the studs are gone, the plate mm-hmm. is gone. Right. Uh, now what? So... There may not be a price to deal with every component involved there, for instance, a perlineal foot for stud replacement or, you know, dealing with structural issues that that in depth. But at least because we're involved, we can check and balance Mm -hmm. whatever price the roofing contractor is coming up with and also the amount of work that he does. So he doesn't just say, well, I have to do this whole wall because it has a door in it and it's rotten in this one foot area. Right, right. Right. So he's not going to go gung-ho on it. He's only going to repair what absolutely needs to be repaired and what's logical to repair. And his costs for doing so will be checked by us. Right. So even though there may not actually have been a separate unit price for that work, at least somebody's checking on it. Well, I think I think the bottom line, especially for those of us homeowners or strata council members who don't know much, if anything at all, about roofing, and yet somehow or another have the responsibility of on a single family home of, oh boy, it's that time, looks like it's time to get the roof looked at, or the same with the strata building. At least when you hire a pro like interprovincial roofing consultant, Sean, you you know that uh, you're you're going to be able to have someone to use as a soundboard. Mm -hmm. You know, do I really have to pay this much money for that? Well, yes, you do, and here's why. If you don't, you don't have to. You can do it on the cheap, but I guarantee if you do it that way, you'll be back fixing it again at the same time next year. So spend the extra money, get it done right, and then it's good for a few years. Those conversations uh, ahead 
of any money being spent are unbelievably helpful. Yeah, they're very helpful. Uh, there's a lot of times where we have to deal with an issue on a job and the owner just refuses to um, address it properly due to the cost sure, of sure. the issue. For instance, if you have a large brick chimney adjacent to the roof and you have to tie into that with the roof system and the owner does not want to redo that chimney. So now you have to address the chimney in some way so that you're protecting the roof system. Mm -hmm. And you're protecting the roofing contractor, in this case, from having to suffer through a leak, which appears to be caused by his roof, but it's actually coming from the chimney. So we need to address that issue in such a way that the, the building is protected, the owner is protected, the contractor is protected from an unnecessary um, uh, focus on him for the cause of the leak. Right. So the owner then has to do a certain minimal amount of work to deal with that issue. Which would be what? Replacing the flashing around You the, replace the, the flashing at right, a minimum. Right. Where it meets the roof. And yeah. And we, we might ask them to repoint the chimney, which means to replace the grout. Uh, but in some cases, the brick itself is gone. Uh -huh. And in those cases, the, the, the quality of the actual main components of that chimney need to be replaced. All right. Our guest is Sean Lang, president of Interprovincial Roof Consultants, a uh, consultants rather. Uh, the website, by the way, is iprc.ca. You may want to have a look at it while we take this quick time out here on AM650. There's still more ahead with experts on call. The show focused on delivering relevant and beneficial consumer information. This is Experts on Call on AM650.